So all it took to get Mistra's attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. Well, I doubt it's an apology for asking me to die on her behalf. Whatever it is. If it's important enough to send Elminster, you can be damn sure she's serious. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. After you. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Ah, ally mine. We are reunited once more. I was just regaling sweet Isabel with tales of our prowess. Very impressive. Thank you for helping Aelin. That wizard sounded absolutely dastardly. I always do, with darling Isabel by my side. Enjoy the spoils of your victory. Spin memories of Laroican's death in your mind like silk floss. My darling, we must inform our friend of our news. Indeed. I've scouted a Salunite enclave outside the city. They faced the Absolute's armies and come out battered and bruised. Aelin and I will go to them, provide what help we can. But fear not. When the time comes for you to face the foe of foes, Isabel and I will stand by your side. We wouldn't miss it. Not for anything. Go well, friend. We will see you soon. And with our great powers combined, this city will be saved. Heard you put that prick, Leroican, in the ground. Good. Only sad I couldn't help. Thank you. For having Roland's back. You just can't stop saving us, can you? Very well. Have you seen this place? It's incredible. And this is our house now. I think it goes without saying that you have a room here. Anytime. I knew Laroican amassed knowledge like a dragon with its hoard, but never could I have imagined such wealth. And the tower itself has a cannon. The sheer power is mind-boggling. Study and catalog it. Leroican barely knew his alphabet. Then share it with the realms. After all, it does little good collecting dust in an old tower. Indeed. I must still figure out its intricacies, but uh, I am close. to put my hands on everything. Oh, for me. Interference with flaming. 
good is that going to do us? We dealt with swiftly and harshly. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic, as though the weave itself were coursing beneath her stony skin. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. An audience with your goddess can go wrong. I should know. But do whatever you feel is best, Get. Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm going to have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is for me alone. No one else is permitted to enter it no matter how talented a user of the weave they are. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember, you were my lover, my chosen, yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic Wrought in the brief moment Cassus ascended to Godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Cassus reforged, 
I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. Weave. I had no idea. Do you realize what this means? The orb is no stray piece of ordinary magic. It is something entirely different. The nascent form of a new divine power. Of course, I couldn't control it. I was mortal. But once I reforge the crown, the power of a god will be mine to command. The orb will answer to me. Evil is a reductive term. Too often used to dismiss choices the observer lacks the imagination to understand. Let me assure you, Karsai Weave has no more inherent evil to it than a, a child in the womb or an axe half-forged on the blacksmith's anvil. It is a tool, ready to be shaped by its wielder, by me. And you know me to be someone of reasonably sound moral judgment, don't you? But they didn't. I always thought it was a miracle that I survived, but I'm starting to wonder if there was more to it, what if it chose me? I don't think you're quite seeing what I'm seeing. Think about it. The crown of Carsus, the Netherstones, the Carsi Weave. No more than a tadpole's breath from being reunited. This is my chance to get back everything that was taken from me. Everything Mistra denied me. And once I have it, I can forge a better world. Be a better god. I want you to help me. Well then, what more is there to discuss? All we need to do is stay focused on the task at hand. Defeating that Elder Brain. After that, you can leave the rest to me.
What's this, cousin? Another absolutist come to see what we did to poor old Sarin. Your god took her mind, cultist, so Vareki took her head, and I burned the flesh from her bones. And now you come to interrupt the funeral rites. I... Yes, cousin. An excellent idea. Cousin says we will take you in return. He says you look just like kindling for Sarin's funeral pyre. He is... Clan. Summoned in the place of the friends that I lost. Sarin Bereki and I, we were the three finest thieves in Baldur's Gate. We broke into the offices of Gortash, discovered he was with the Absolute too. Your fellow cultists hunted us, so we hid down here. We were safe, and so was our loot. Until the darkness soured Sarin's mind. She kept our treasure from us. Said Bereki and I had gone strange. Hush, cousin. Sarin turned into a cultist herself, so we did what we had to. Bereki wept until his voice was gone, and then he was gone too leaving only me to conduct Sarin's rites. And my cousins here. You cannot conduct the rites without a clan to bear witness. Or some fuel for the fire. Say your words as you pass then, priest, and do not come back. This is Sarin's final resting place, and a killing ground for all who come to disturb her. Whatever it's called, it's impressive, and it tastes great. Did you go for a swim earlier? Nah, don't know how to swim. Uh, must have been some other oozing, stinking lump of flesh.
can't afford to stay idle. Let's try this way. That's curious. Very well. That's curious. What's next, I wonder? Huh? Never mind. At the ready. That might be worth a look. Penitent looks at you silently, expectantly. The penitent doesn't respond, holding your gaze almost unblinkingly with his. The penitent doesn't respond, holding your gaze almost unblinkingly with his. The penitent doesn't respond. Holding there is the slightest flicker of acknowledgement in his eyes. Penitent blink. of holding. I wonder what the next move is. No choice but to keep going.
focused. Blood comes easy these days. in my best interest. I wonder if this is worth the cost. Anything of use? Mm. On my way. No traps, please. A couple turns should do it. I 
might be useful. Romantic ritual, perhaps. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Beggar, vagrant, scum. My name was Taran. Tumble down long ago. No home. Maybe I need more pockets. This jar... It feels like death had... now. Can't keep me out.
jar that grants immortality hidden inside a zombie. It's almost poetic. my breath.
On the move. moment.
another fight. Victory awaits. My path be true. Death is but a word away. One can't always be a gentleman. Swiftly now. Ready. Have to keep going. I'm exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. Corpse regards you lifelessly. Eris, the turnkey three. Sarin, Bereki, me. No better thieves. Said I lost my mind, then lost his voice. Cult took Saren's mind, so we took her head. The corpse remains silent. It does not know. Hiding loot from cold. Sarin paranoid hid it away. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Give it a shot.
of cultists is on its way to Qatar. A positive headline. I can't believe it! Handling nonsense, the mouth is pretty. I don't care which necromancer they are. It's taking up too many pages. Ah, I was hoping to bump into you sooner or later. I've heard about you. I know the so-called saviour of the city has taken an interest in you. One thing I've learned, real saviours never label themselves as such. Lord, a fine title for the greatest scoundrel in town. Imagine, wagging your big metal woolies up and down a thoroughfares and calling yourself Archduke. Pathetic. He needs a proper challenge, and from what I've heard, you're the person to give it to him. I might not have exactly what you need, but I remain at your service. Have a look, at least. Got speed, and come back whenever you need something. Find all the remedy and alchemy ingredients you need at Bone Cloak's Apothecary. Oh. Yes, love. But like that. It's Bone Cloak's. I'm Balin. Hello. Nice to meet you. We sell all sorts of ingredients and goods. Ah, go on, Balin. Get on with it then. <laughs> it's you. I never forget a face. Welcome to Bone Cloaks. Doors are still open thanks to that noble stock you helped us with. We've even enough left over to keep ourselves fed. Not that Balin's worth the gold it takes to keep him fattened up. Anyway. We can knock a little off the top if you've a mind to buy. <laughs> oh, sure. Cultists on the loose, a murderer hacking people to bits, and big metal freaks stomping hither, thither, and yon. Couldn't be more delighted. He's wrecking my head, as always. Makes himself useful with a broom from time to time, at least. You don't know him like I do. He may play the lamb, but beneath it all, he's a black-hearted ogre. I've got the scars to prove it. Anyway, you ought to keep your nose in your own corner. You might upset folk. Take your pick.
breathe deep and move. Don't want to draw any attention. With a flick of the wrist. Say this for the bone folks. They know that much. Perhaps they should expand their horizons. Too much time obsessing over fungi seems to leave them a bit well. Like oh, them. Byproduct of their profession. Few can spend a lifetime inhaling fungal spores without turning out of it muddle between the ears. It speaks a feline dialect called Mriar. It wants to know if you're its mother. Devil's feet. 